Side Hustle Show 96, Essentialism and Finding Your One Thing, getting started on the path to less but better. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show, where aspiring part-time entrepreneurs learn how to turn their side hustle dreams into reality. Because your nine to five may make you a living, but your five to nine makes you alive. And now your host, Nick Loper. What's happening? Nick Loper here. Welcome to the Side Hustle Show. This is episode 96. It's called Essentialism and Finding Your One Thing. And the uh, title comes from a couple books I just got done reading um, by those same titles, Essentialism by uh, Greg McKeon and The One Thing uh, by Gary Keller. Now, this is a, a solo episode. It's just me on the mic. There's no real agenda. I'm just going to go through uh, my notes on the book, my kind of thoughts and, and takeaways on these things. I read most of these books on the plane to and from uh, Hawaii, which is a, it's a surprisingly good productivity hack uh, flying is for me. because there's no, there's no Wi-Fi, or at least I don't pay for the Wi-Fi. And, you know, you just, you're trapped in this tiny little seat and there, there's nothing to do. So I knocked out a ton of, a ton of reading, a ton of writing. And uh, among the reading were these, uh, were these two books. So I want to kind of kick it off with a quote. This is, this is a quote that's attributed to Leonardo da Vinci. And he says, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And that's one of my all-time favorite quotes because it's you know it, it's so true it's not always about adding more you think about the the iphone right it's a very complex machine it has one button on the home on the you know, on the on the front of the device like it's a very sophisticated device it's also a very simple device and you're trying to just, just percolate on that a little bit i think you'll i think you'll like it uh, another one of my favorite quotes from the one thing was uh it says if you don't take care of your body where will you live? And that kind of brought me back to uh, Richard Branson's number one productivity hack of just, you know, exercise. He, he asked for his number one productivity hack. He says exercise. And oftentimes when, when things are going crazy and there's a million things going on, that's the first thing that I cut. Oh, I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to work out because I, like, I'm, I'm too busy. But he says, no, you need to take the time to, in, to invest in taking care of your body. And and now sometimes I'll just do these you know ten or fifteen minute kind of homemade CrossFit workouts with you know pushups and lunges and kettlebells, and it, it's amazing. After that, after even just fifteen minutes, like I, I feel great the rest of the day. And it's like everybody has fifteen minutes, I hope. And and it's it's a very small thing that you can do to take care of your body. But here's here's the. Uh, the, the, so the one thing, the subtitle is The Surprisingly Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results. And w- basically, the idea of the book is to focus on you know, one thing. What do you want to be known for? What do you want, what do you want to accomplish? And that really dictates you, every action that you take from there. It really helps narrow down that focus. And I feel like some, some members of my mastermind recommended I read this book after I, you know, rattled off the half dozen different projects. I couldn't even say, I said, uh, Nick, how many projects do you have going on? Oh, five or 10. Oh, five or 10. Like, I don't even know. I can't even count them all. And he's like, have you read the one thing? And in reading it, I still, I still don't know what my one thing is. I would love for it to be, you know, helping, helping people earn money outside of their day jobs. And I feel like that's, uh, my, that's my mission with with side hustle nation, but I I don't know if that's a, like as well defined as it could be. And so one of the messages that I, that I want to get across in this episode is it's okay to not know what your one thing is, and it may change. It may change over time. But here's here's the focusing question that the author gives uh, to help define that one thing for you know in the big picture or in or in the near term. He says. What's the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? What's the one thing I can do right now such that by doing it, everything else will become easier or unnecessary? 
And think about how empowering that is because of the tail end of that question. What's going to be, what's going to become easier or unnecessary after I do this thing or as I'm walking down the path towards this thing? And it's, it's a freedom seeking question that, that I really like. And like I said, I'm not uh, 100% confident on my answer to it yet, but I encourage you to, to ask it for yourself and, and understand that it may change over time. One of the other interesting sections of this book, the, the one thing, is when they're talking about the time it takes to form a habit. And, it's, and they're talking about, oh, the, the, the world's most successful people must be extremely disciplined. And one of the examples that, that we've given on the podcast before is with, with Steve Scott and his Kindle book writing, like, hey, I'm going to knock out 2,000 words every morning. And, and I've said he has an amazing amount of discipline to be able to do that. But what the one thing argues is, no, he's just simply made that a habit. And it's, and it's harder, to, harder to break that habit than it is to continue that habit. And I go through the example that on average, or kind of like the inflection point on this curve, like the days to, uh, the days to create this habit was 66 days. So sticking with something for 66 days before it becomes uh, a deeply ingrained habit. In the past, I've done like these uh, these thirty day challenges because I somewhere I read it was only like twenty one days or something to form a habit. And I was like, oh, if I do it for thirty, I would be safe, right? Um, I did like the thirty day writing challenge. I wrote five hundred words a day for thirty days, and it, and it was great. Created a ton of content, and you know I felt like that was a pretty good habit. And but after that, like and I've slacked on that still. Like I still try and create that on average over the course of time, but there's definitely some gaps in my, in my calendar. I've done like flossing. I've done the, the push up challenge, which if you've, if you've gotten like on my email list, you probably received my message about, you know, how I went from 27 push ups to 70 something in the course of the month, just by focusing on these incremental improvements. But after that experiment was over, I stopped doing the push ups. Had I continued, you know, for, for the 66 days, who knows, it might still be a habit, and you know who knows how many I could do now. Like it would be kind of it would be interesting to see the with the cold shower thing. That's something that is is pretty much a habit now because it's been it's been almost a year. In fact, when this goes live, it's been fifty fifty one weeks. So that's it, I've, I've gotten clear past the sixty six days. Uh, so that one it's not it's not necessarily a matter of discipline anymore. It's a matter of habit. And so when, as that relates to your one thing, what's the one habit that you can get into doing and force yourself to do for 66 days until it's, you know, so deeply ingrained. That's just, that's just what I do. I just take cold showers. It's a weird thing. The next section of the one thing I want to talk about is this pyramid that starts with with purpose at the base. And so there's four P's to this. Purpose, priority, productivity, and profit. So he starts with the base of priority, and that's your big picture one thing. What do I want to accomplish? I want to retire to Costa Rica. I want to, you know, make ten thousand dollars a month passive income. What's my one thing? I want to be the number one you know real estate agent in my town. Whatever whatever it is. That on the next tier up this pyramid, and this is a little bit maybe hard to visualize, but purpose uh, is the base. Priority is the next step up that pyramid. And what he means by that is what's the, what's the one action that I can take that's going to drive me towards that goal? Like maybe that's a, a longer term project or you know, whatever that's going to be. But what's my, what's my priority to getting that done? And then that dictates the next tier up, or that fuels the next tier up the pyramid, productivity. What am I going to do now, in this moment? How am I going to be productive towards that priority, towards my purpose? And then the final point, or the final step, or the final tip of the pyramid is profit, especially in a business context. Like, by doing this productive work... Uh, towards this priority project that's working towards my purpose, my one thing, naturally that's, that's going to ring the cash register, right? And, and so that was kind of the, the four-step pyramid that I really like. One thing that I've started doing lately, and probably should have started doing this years and years ago, is blocking off time on my own calendar. 
this is probably like productivity 101, uh, especially for side hustlers. But blocking off that time, say, and in the book, they recommend a block of four hours, four hours a day, which might be, uh, it might be a stretch for most people working uh, a day job still. But blocking off that time to work on your one thing, to work on your top priority task for the day. And so what I've started doing is kind of itemizing out my, my to-do list the night before and saying these are, and kind of numbering the, the items. These are my top three actions for first thing in the morning. So I know as soon as I get back from taking the dog out and I hit that treadmill desk, these are the top three things I'm going to work on. And a lot of days, I'm going to find that they're they're knocked out by you know, by 8.30 in the morning. And that's that's fantastic. That means the rest of the day is just gravy. And I can go you know, work on whatever else it is. But being conscious about scheduling time with yourself to work on that one thing. Because in, and this is a quote from Essentialism, it's like, if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. Those those hours are going to get filled up with something else unless you block them off. So I thought that was a really powerful thing. And then the final point I have on the one thing is the distinction between urgency and importance. And this is a trap that that I fall into and I feel really overwhelmed when when dealing with email is because this is a perfect example. Most email is urgent because it's in your inbox. You get a you can see the little inbox counter climbing up on my my Gmail browser tab. But it's probably not important. It probably doesn't require an immediate reply. It's not it's not a phone call. It's not instant messaging. It's email. You know, back in the day like the AOL days, I'm dating myself a little bit here, but it was like you would dial in, you know, once a day, once a week sometimes. Like it, it doesn't necessitate the the urgency that we assign to it in most cases. And there's there's probably a lot of other examples of that in your life. Email is just you know, the first one that comes to mind. Like, you know, all of the Facebook notifications, all this stuff. It can wait, right? It can wait for your four hour block of time to work on your one thing, if that's what if that's what it's going to be. Now, shifting into essentialism, also also a very good book, and I, I kind of recommend reading these back to back because that's what that, <laughs> that's what drove it home for me. And even though I still don't know, you know, exactly what it is, it, it, it must be rubbing off because I did decline a couple opportunities this week. So I think that's something that's, that's going in the right direction. But the the gist of essentialism is less but better, not not less is more, not less for the sake of, um, you know, minimalism, just in, in that sense alone, but less but better, like a, a less cluttered mind, a less cluttered house, a less cluttered, uh, you know, workspace, a less cluttered, you know, project list, just like, wh- wh- is, and it ties in perfectly to the one thing, like, what am I going to work on that, you know, that's my unique value to the world? I don't know. Um, I thought it was really powerful. And if you don't prioritize your life, someone else will. Kind of the three, the three sentence or the three mi- three sentence mindset shift that was uh, explained in essentialism is: I choose to. So I choose to do this versus I have to do this. You're going to be a, a happier camper if you can choose to do things. Uh, I I choose to spend time with my family instead of I have to take my kids to school. I I don't know. I was going to say, like, I choose to do the dishes, but um, uh, <laughs> I choose to live in a clean house instead of I have to do the dishes, something like that. Only a few things really matter, really matter. Um, you know, your health, your family, those, and everything else is just kind of, is kind of noise. So I thought that was an, an important point. And then the final, the final mindset thing was, I can do anything, but not everything. I can do anything, but not everything. And that was like, it took me a couple times to read that because I was like, wait, what? But it's, you know, I found this to be true. I'm, and I feel a lot of times I'm, you know, being pulled in, in a million different directions with all these little projects. And I'm confident I can do them all, but I don't know if I can do them all well. I don't know if I can do them all as well as I as I could if I focus that energy into doing one project really, really well. 
And that was something, you know, I don't know if this was in the Brian Harris recording in episode 87 or not, but it, it might have been after we hung up and I was tell, talking to him about all the different projects I had going on. He's like, why don't you just, why don't you just pick one? Like, why, why are you doing all these different things? Why don't you just pick the one? And I was like, well, I don't know. I have a little bit of, uh, you know, ADD. Yeah, like I, I, I constantly want to be trying new things and that's potentially I understand that's potentially detrimental, but that's also part of the that's also part of the side hustle brand. It's like test, you know, experimenting, testing out these different things. But there's a John Maxwell quote in uh, in Essentialism that's really really good, and he says you cannot overestimate the unimportance of practically everything. <laughs> you cannot overestimate the unimportance of practically anything. And when I think about that, I think about that in the context of like my last, uh, like my last corporate job, right? If I, you know, it's a Fortune 500 company. If I didn't show up to work, yet there were fire drills every day. Yet if I didn't show up to work, what what would happen? Yes, life would go on. This company would survive. There, it wouldn't even be a blip on the radar. And so there, there's this kind of goes back to the urgency versus importance and all this stuff. But it's like there's there there's only a few few things that really really require your time and attention and the, these two books kind of got me to thinking more more clearly about what those uh, what those might be uh, essentialism also recommends carving out time to think or to read and you know I, I started using the headspace app this week for for guided meditation and you know the first couple days uh, I'll be honest the first three days I was like, this I, I, w- I should be working with these ten minutes. I should be working. I shouldn't be sitting here listening to this British guy tell me, you know, to breathe. It was, you know, it's a challenge, and, and that's something that I want to continue to to work on to to invest that that time in kind of mental clarity. And it sounds a little woo woo, but I, I don't know. Maybe there's something to it. There must be something to it if everyone if everyone swears by it. And it kind of reminds me. Uh, in because I'm like really really bad at taking time to to educate myself or time taking time to read during during business hours because I feel like I should be I should be working this is not productive time you know reading is like a leisure activity right but kind of reminds me of of like a Warren Buffett story that I read where he you know probably would spend six hours of his workday reading right and that w- that was his productive time. And I think essentialism gives the example that, you know, he was, you know, a masterful stock picker, but it wasn't about building this massive portfolio. The book says he made 90% of his wealth from 10 picks over the course of his career, 10, you know, 10 different companies that he invested in over the course of the year. So it's not buying up a, a mutual fund. It's not about like day trading and flipping these different, um, these different stocks, if, unless that was your one thing. But for him, it was, you know, taking the time to to think, to do the do the research, do the homework, get himself educated, and then um, and then make his moves. So I thought that was really cool. the uh, The other um, element of essentialism that I've been implementing actually for the past couple years has been uh, no meetings Fridays. And so you'll occasionally see me tweet with with hashtag no meetings Fridays because you know it's just it goes back to blocking off that time like you know my, my calendar otherwise is fairly open people can book time with me um, you know at their convenience and that's and that's fine and that's great to start these conversations but Fridays is the day that I have blocked off to uh, kind of knock out the rest of the things I need to get done that week to you know work on other longer term projects or a lot of times my wife will have every other Friday off, in some cases. Oh, the dog just barfed on the couch. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> so that that actually just happened. The, uh, the my, my co-host, the side hustle Shih Tzu, is uh, not feeling so hot, but he's uh, now he's back to sleep, so that's okay. The... So we left off, and we're talking about no meetings Fridays as a, as a little productivity hack, and you know goes back to blocking off time in your calendar. The question that essentialism asks is, what do you really want? And that's a 
for me, that's a really hard question to answer. So a a better like I don't know what do you, what, everyone what do we really want? Like I want to you know have a <laughs> I, I don't know. But the uh, maybe, maybe a better question is uh, is what's your perfect average day? Like that that may be a little bit more attainable, a little bit more. It may bring it closer to home, and that comes from my friend uh, Julian Gordon. What's your perfect average day look like? And for me, it could be you know something like walking the dog, walking uh, to get Starbucks with my wife in the morning, uh, knocking out a, a little bit of work after that, in and in the afternoon, doing some writing. Um, you know, maybe having a couple, re- recording a podcast with some awesome side hustler, since that definitely is a highlight of uh, of the week for for me. And maybe having having dinner with friends or something like that. And so, you know, what what's a perfect average day look like for you? And how how can that generate income? How can you see yourself getting there? You know, how does that focus back into the the purpose, priority, productivity, profit pyramid from uh, from the one thing? Um, and another important point about doing that exercise is you know is without defining that uh, that goal without defining that that vision that end point um you know how how are you going to know when you when you get there how are you going to know when you succeed and same thing you know setting setting smart goals and uh you know making some concrete things so you know when you've when you've achieved it and that's one of the it's one of the most challenging things about podcasting right like i had no idea it was going to be 96 episodes into the show and but like I, I don't know, it's just kind of unfathomable when you're when you're first starting out, because you never know like how long is this going to continue? How long do you stick it out before you know you know how uh, how many downloads is is good? Like where should I be after you know three months or six months? But you know it's it's totally it's totally fun to to keep doing it. So no 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 plans are going away. And the final point I have on uh, on, on essentialism is the concept of zero-based budgeting for time and dollars versus uh, using using your existing guidelines, right? So in, in government or in kind of households, right, we're going to base the 2015 budget off of the 2014 budget. We're going to make slight adjustments off of that. But what zero-based budgeting says, why don't we toss all of the conceptions, um, all of the you know, preconceived notions out the window and start from zero instead, right? If we were starting from zero, would we, I don't know, we, would we spend this much on housing? Would we spend this much on healthcare? Would we spend, you know, from the government standpoint, would we spend this much on military if this was, like, if we were starting from scratch? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, if we didn't have all this built-in infrastructure and all of the, like, if all of these things hadn't been built up over the course of 200 years like what if we what if we just bulldozed and started from scratch and would encourage you to think of that in terms of your in terms of your day in terms of your time as well it kind of gives you a little bit more freedom and and there's going to be naturally there's going to be some care you're going to still have to spend some time on you know all of the essentials all these things but maybe the rest of that time could be could be freed up and same thing with your budget like maybe there is some if you started from zero instead of starting from last year's, maybe there's some some opportunity there. So that was my thoughts on essentialism and the one thing. Definitely encourage you to to pick those up and and go back to back if you can, because I think they'll really hammer home the point of you know, let, let's just pick one thing. What are we going to be What are we going to be known for? And in the case of side hustle nation. I do hope that it is, you know, helping people earn money outside of their day jobs. And that's how I'm going to at least justify all these other projects. Well, there's, they're all still under the umbrella of that, of that larger purpose. But for, you know, if I was just starting out, you know, I'm, I would be much more tempted to, to go down one path. And maybe that is what ends up happening is focusing on one project at a time instead of trying to juggle uh, everything and maybe putting it, putting those things on the back burner because they may seem urgent, but they're likely not, uh, they may, they may seem important, but they're likely not urgent, I guess is the, is the phrasing on that. Anyways, thank you so much for listening. I'll be back in your earbuds next week in episode 97. It's a good one. You're not going to want to miss it. Thanks so much. And I'll see you then. 
Thanks for listening to the Side Hustle Show at www.sidehustlenation.com. 